Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I'm going to show you how to solve population genetics problems and here's a problem, a phenotypically normal couple has had one normal child and a child with cystic fibrosis and autosomal recessive disease, the incidence of cystic fibrosis in the population from which this couple came is 1 out of 500 if the normal child is eventually marries a phenotypically normal person from the same population, what is the risk that the newly weds will produce a child with cystic fibrosis? Let me start with pedigree of this family. So female, male, and this couple has two children. One child is unaffected, another child is affected. I'm using this sign because nothing is said about gender of the children and this child is affected. So we use this sign. And what is the genotype of the parents? If one of the child would be homozygous recessive, then we can say uh, that genotype of the parents, nothing is said that any of them affected we have to assume that they have normal phenotype would be uh, heterozygous for this genetic disorder. So would have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. That means that uh, they are phenotypically normal, but they can get a child who is affected. And of course, they may have children who are not going to be affected. According to our problem, we know that this child is unaffected, but what is the probability for this child to be heterozygous? And if both parents are heterozygous, and we know that they obligate heterozygous, the probability would be as follows. Take a look. This is simple Punnett square. And here we have capital A, capital A, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. And we know that this child is unaffected, so we can exclude this variant here. This child cannot have two recessive alleles, otherwise phenotype would be affected. So this child belongs to this group and probability for this child to be heterozygous, as you see, is 2 out of 3. So let's put this number here. So probability for this child to be um, heterozygous is 2 thirds. Now uh, let's move with our calculations. In order to solve this problem, we need to know Hardy-Weinberg formula, where frequency of the three genotypes, which uh, we can get in population, if we know frequency of the two alleles would be as follows. So P squared plus two P Q plus Q squared, and all this would equal to one. And in this formula, P squared stands for the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype, 2PQ stands for the frequency of the heterozygous genotype and Q squared stands for the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. And all the alleles P plus all the alleles Q in a gene pool would equal to 1 because we have here only two alleles. Dominant allele A, as you see, and recessive allele A. So all dominant allele A plus all recessive allele A, if we combine them, would equal to 1. The frequency of the occurrence of this genetic disorder is 1 out of 500. That means that 1 out of 500 people would be affected and would belong to this genotype and this phenotype. Again, we have here two phenotypes, and this is going to be one phenotype and this is going to be another phenotype and this is going to be 
people who belong to these two genotypes would be phenotypically normal. Those who belong to this genotype would be affected with this genetic disorder, just like uh, this uh, person here. With next step, let's convert this fraction into decimal 1 over 500. If we divide, is going to equal to 0 0.0. Zero, zero, two. And this is frequency again of the homozygous recessive genotype. So in order to find frequency of the recessive allele A, we just have to take a square root of this number. So we have to take a square root of 0 0.002. And this is how we are going to find a frequency of the recessive allele A or Q. The answer is going to be here 0 0.045. If we know the frequency of the recessive allele Q, how we can find the frequency of the dominant allele P or dominant allele A? It's going to be 1 minus frequency of the recessive allele, which is 0 0.045 and the frequency of the dominant allele is going to be 0 0.955 and this is frequency of the dominant allele A. Or according to our formula, to the frequency of the dominant allele P. So now we know the frequency of the dominant allele and recessive allele. So recessive allele frequency, dominant allele frequency. So now we can find how many people in this population are heterozygous. And this part of the formula stands for the frequency of the people who are heterozygous. One more time. Two. P, Q stand for the frequency of the heterozygotes in this population. And we know P, so 2 multiplied by frequency of the P, which is here, which is uh, 0 0.955. And by the frequency of the recessive allele A, which is here, and the frequency is 0 0.045. And the frequency of the heterozygotes in this population is going to be equal to 0 0.086. So now we know the probability that if this person would marry any person from its community, again, we don't know the sex of this person, so we don't know the sex of this person, but probability for this person to be uh, heterozygous would be 0 0.086. Now our final calculations would be as follows. So for this person here, probability to be heterozygous is two thirds. If we do all our calculations in decimal format, then we can say that probability would be uh, 2 divided by 3, 0 0.666. And we have to multiply by the probability of this person also to be heterozygous, and probability is 0 0.086. And if these two heterozygous people, uh, so again, one person heterozygous and second person is also heterozygous, probability that if they would mate and they would have affected child, as you see, would be one quarter. Again, one person heterozygous, another heterozygous, and probability for the child to be affected is one quarter or we can say 0 
0.25. And now when we multiply all these numbers, the answer is going to be 0 0.014. This is probability for the child to be affected. We can put small a, small a, this is going to be probability uh, if heterozygous couple marry to have affected child and this is going to be our final answer. If you need an answer in percentage form, we have to multiply this number by 100 and the answer is going to be 1.4%. What this number tell us? This number tell us that probability for this couple to have affected child is going to be about seven times greater than uh, if two random people in a population would mate. So in this case, they would have probability uh, one out of 500 uh, to have affected child, but uh, which is zero. 0 0.002, but this couple has about seven times greater probability to have affected child because we know that this couple is heterozygous and uh, this affect our calculations. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.